Our next student speaker is a robot soccer coach. Or is it more correct to say undergraduate computer science researcher programming soccer playing robots? I'll leave it up to you. Kyle started at UMass about the same time we were building up a robot soccer team to compete at the RoboCup international competition. And he was instrumental in helping the team secure first place in the lower bracket at RoboCup 2017 and fifth place overall in 2018. Since then, Kyle has contributed to other research, most recently on multi-robot path planning. I believe that in a successful research project, both advisor and student learn a lot from each other. This was certainly true. While working with Kyle, I learned a lot about new and old ideas for multi-robot path planning, unusual programming minutiae at C++, and also half a dozen ways to say no. <laughs> Along the way, Kyle grew to, became, uh, to become a valued member of our robotics research group, including becoming the on-call person for crises. Crises like when our automated test system started emailing everybody, everybody in the group every hour on the hour about catastrophic memory, memory leak failures detected. And Kyle came to the rescue. Kyle is going on to join the PhD program at UPenn. But before then, please join me in welcoming Kyle Vedder to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you for that introduction. And to the class of 2019, congratulations. You did it. You did it. I'm not talking about the piece of paper that's merely symbolic. I'm talking about what it represents. I'm talking about what's up here, what's in your brain, what you understand. It can't be bought, it can't be borrowed, and it can't be stolen. With the understanding that you have gained, you are now firmly at the reins of a fundamentally transformative technology. You deserve to feel proud, and I am proud to call myself one of your peers. Now, we're all about to go out into the world, be it working, education, or something else, but before we finally head off, I want to remind you that computer science can be more than just mobile, desktop, and web apps. That is to say, computer science is fundamentally the science of computation. It teaches you the art of computational thinking. It requires you to have a working knowledge of important mathematical concepts. And it teaches you how to reason about the innate complexity of a problem. Look at biology, linguistics, astrophysics, or really any scientific field at all. Most advances in the last 10 years have been cross-discipline, and at their heart, many feature computer science as a critical component. For example, consider protein folding. We always hear about how DNA dictates the form and function of organisms, but really, this genetic material is simply an encoding that describes how to create proteins. These proteins are molecules that carry out many of the functions in our cells based on their shape, and their shape is determined by a sequence composed of 20 basic amino acids. To be able to combat diseases, such as cancers or prions, we need to be able to reason about the shape of individual proteins given their amino acid sequence. Unfortunately, the problem of mapping an amino acid sequence to a folded protein is NP-hard. That is to say, it's extremely computationally expensive to solve. That's why the project Folding at Home was founded. Folding at Home uses volunteered CPU and GPU time, from server farms to PlayStation 3s, to simulate folding proteins. At its heart, there's two major computer science problems. One, the massive heterogeneous distributed systems problem of better coordinating all of these machines to do meaningful work. And two, the systems engineering problem of building solvers that are fast in practice on the wide variety of these real machines. Since 2000, there has been more than 200 scientific papers that have been published as a result of folding at home. But maybe you're like me, and the only biology you know is that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Or perhaps you think diving headlong into a completely different field is not for you. That's fine. You can blend what you already know with other important areas. Consider, for example, healthcare.gov. The healthcare.gov website was created by the Affordable Care Act to allow individuals to buy private insurance on a unified exchange, thereby allowing them to understand what's available and how they can get the coverage they need. On the surface, it's just a web app, but it's important that it works well. If any of you remember when healthcare.gov launched, it was very broken for several months as it was poorly engineered. And while, of course, the study of developing good software is obviously a computer science problem, there's a lot more to the site than meets the eye. It has deep user experience challenges that require a blend of multiple sciences. It needs to be accessible for people who are vision impaired. It needs to be intuitive to use for a wide range of ages and skill levels. It needs to be usable on a wide range of devices and with a wide range of connection qualities. And of course, it needs to communicate in a clear and a digestible format uh, the 
nuanced legal and financial information available on the site. The engineering involved is clearly computer science, but it needs cross-pollination with other disciplines to achieve its goal. Now, these are just two examples. There are many, many problems that need computer science plus something more. Social scientists need access to tools that they can use to make sense of the massive amounts of data generated by social media. Policymakers need access to better educational resources in order to overcome their lack of expertise in technical areas fundamental to both the economy and society at large. Personally, my long-term goal is to build robots which can provide economically accessible, high-quality elder care to the millions of elderly people who lack access to the type of care they deserve. You all have graduated with a degree in computer science. That's a degree in problem solving, a degree in understanding how to develop and apply technology. I think that, at least for some of us, it's easy to forget that there's a whole wide world of problems outside of the computer case. You have the skills to tackle any of them. And I challenge you to pick one and do it. Thank you so much for your time, and once again, congratulations to the class of 2019.